So he probably had me uh, before. And today I'm going to go over pretty much how to get this dev board up and running. So hopefully everyone's at least purchased this, right? Um, you're not getting power, you know that? Well, we got enough. Yeah. For an hour and a half. Okay. We're still only doing 15 minutes. So just a short introduction to this board. So hopefully everyone's uh, purchased this or is in the process of purchasing this. Purchasing this. Uh, and we have all the uh, software loaded in the embedded lab in 203 and in the senior lab that's next to 203. So you should be able to just plug this board in, uh, fire up the necessary belt software, which I'm going to go over today, and it should work out the box. So if you find a computer in there that it doesn't work, let me know and I'll uh, work on it. So, pretty much. What you'll get with your kit is, well, number one, this board, uh, USB cable. Uh, if you, there is an option that you can order an extension board for like a penny more. I don't know that for those of you that see this online, I think it's Future Electronics. Uh, there's also an additional wireless card. I don't know if I read on if they still offered it or not. And I don't know if anyone wants to invest that, but I got it for free at the time. So I have it out there. So anyways, uh, one issue that I want to point out is, depending on what version of the software you get, there might be a few extra steps you need to take to get the tutorials installed because this CD by default doesn't have the tutorials with it. You actually have to go to a, a website, which I'll pull up here in a minute, and sort of show you where you have to download the files and how to get it set up on your own personal computer. But if you can't get it working on your own personal computer, we do have the software installed in the labs, and I do recommend that you actually work in it Work on your uh, project in the lab so that way I can stop by and help you. If you need help, it's just convenient that way. So, without further ado, uh, pretty much the first thing you need to do is you'll install HEW High. We'll run this high performance embedded workshop. So, you'll install this software on this disk. And depending on whether you update the software, because there is an updater that comes with this. If you choose to update this software, if you're going to find some interesting things will happen with the tutorial code. Apparently, when they you know, updated this software, they broke some things in the tutorial code. So I'm going to have some uh, discussion about how to fix that. And in fact, I'll show you. So the ones in the lab have been updated, so you might have to do this. So the first thing you need to do is, for the lab, is you need to create a new project workspace. And simply click OK. And you should have this. And if, it's not, if these options aren't configured, so sometimes this might come up with another process line, depending on whoever's used this uh, software before you. It may be the M16 since that was last semester's board, so that might be selected. But you need to come under CPU family, select RX, and make sure that the Renaissance RX standard uh, toolchain is selected because there is another compiler that is installed with this CD, so you need to make sure you select the right compiler. So when you have these two items selected, you should see YRDKRX62N, which is the tutorial package for this demo board. And again, that's not completely standard with the CD, and I'll show you here in a little bit how to actually install it if it doesn't come with it. So pretty much, you just enter a workspace name. So call it hello, whatever you want to call it. Notice that it's saved to a C workspace folder. This is the default place that uh, HEW will save to. If you're working in the lab, you should, after you get done with your project, you need to make sure you save that off the hard drive and onto like a USB stick or email it to yourself because when you reboot that computer, it refreshes, essentially cleans out everything that you've done and reloads from a prior state. And if you read the I guess the syllabus, you, or the homework in fact, uh, it said that you should reboot after you're done working so that way no one else can get access to your code and copy it. So, just simply click OK. You'll get a dialog like this that will appear uh, for the first lab assignment. We're using, we're modifying the tutorial, but there are other samples available that uses different peripherals on this board. So, simply just click Next, because we're going to use the tutorial. And you'll get a list of all these file things. This thing will generate. So you just simply click finish, hit OK. 
and you're off the ground running. So you should, should see a screen like this. Uh, in this tutorial, they have quite a, quite a bit of files, and I recommend just at some point exploring around, seeing what's out there. There's a lot of support packages and uh, that help control the LCD, uh, different peripheral. So pretty much as time progresses, you might have to dig in and see what is currently supported and what code you have to write with some code you can actually, you know, call on a, a class library and implement the code there, mainly for the LCD. All right, so at this point, once you have this all set up, uh, what you can do is plug in the board. So you simply plug it in. And Windows 7 is pretty good about remembering, you know, installing the device for all the ports, other operating systems, XP, Vista, may try to reinstall it every time you plug it in. In this case, once you get a message down here on the first time that this has been installed, and once it's up and running, you'll see the default program that should come with your board doing something. So hopefully your board out of the box will flash a light, probably put a message on the LCD. If it doesn't, there might be something wrong with your board or if you're using a longer board, uh, maybe someone else has programmed it with something else. But fresh out of the box, you should see something happen. So once you plug the board in and it's recognized, you can debug is the default session. In certain projects, there's a release option that actually uh, optimizes the code better. But for this sake, we'll just leave it as debug. And under default session, we want to change this to JLib. And of course, it'll pop up a message about do you want to save the current configurations. And yes, typically you do. All right. So once you have JLink selected, you can either attempt to build all, and at certain points, you'll attempt to initialize connection to the board, or you can just simply go under debug and say connect. And it'll bring up this dialog. And pretty much all the settings are where they need to be by default. So I wouldn't go playing too much with this, uh, unless you need to do something really specific, and that may be the case later on in the course, but for the first project, you shouldn't have to worry about that. You simply click OK, and it will connect, and hit OK again. Now, sometimes, if the firmware, if this is the first time out of the box, the firmware to actually program this chip won't be loaded on uh, to the JLink, and it'll say, do you wish to download the firmware to actually program the board? And you need to hit yes, and you might get another message that says, I'm unable to connect. But I download is successful, but I'm unable to connect, in which case means you need to come back over here and hit connect again, and it'll work as normal. Okay, so after you connect, you can initialize. Pretty much the same thing. And you're ready to compile at this point. So, we can hit compile. Let's see where the fuck compile goes. Went off the screen. Okay, so here it is the build all button. So we need to compile the project before we can load it onto the board. So here we go, we're building all, building all. And what you'll notice, as I said, if you update, if you just install this out of the box, you shouldn't get this compiler error. However, if you do the updates, which we have the updates in the lab, you might get an error in this particular project that L is missing. Well, I have documentation under the supplementary uh, instructions that are on the website for the lab assignment to actually say how to handle this, but I'll go ahead and show you. Simply, the only thing you've got to do to handle this is you go under Build, RX Standard Toolchain, Link in Library, and you select Selection. And you select this guy right here with the C1, C2, C3. You will modify it. Just put your cursor here between C and C dollar sign. And change this to say L star comma. Hit OK. OK. And now when we build this again, guess what it does? It actually builds. So essentially, HEW changed how their compiler works, and unfortunately it broke this particular project out of the box. Uh, if 
you download the latest and greatest from the website, which they actually recommend in the instructions that rather than install from the CD, you download the this basically the CD from their website that has the newest. Uh, maybe they have actually updated the tutorial on that download, but from this CD and, and updating it, uh, again, there's a little logistical problem there. So once you have that, you're ready to download the module. So in this case, because I hit the build button and I didn't download the module, it popped up a message saying, do I wish to download? And you simply want to hit yes, and it downloads it to the board, in which time it enables the debugger. So I actually can debug, see what code's running, debug it, see what values are in registers, uh, things of that nature. Or if it doesn't pop up that message after you hit the build button, say you uh, didn't plug the board in, you compiled it, but you board, the board wasn't attached, well, when you plug the board in and enable J-Link, it may not save the download. So what you can do is go under debug, download module, and click this, and it downloads what you compiled onto the board. And then from this point, we can reset the CPU so you can actually see what's going on here. So you see the lights cut off. This actually sets it to the beginning of the code. And then we can hit go. And well, you know it's actually running the demo code. And so and we control the blinking rate. And like that. And just, uh, Cool, cool stuff. So, pretty cool, right? Blinking LEDs. All right. So, just to pull up the website that they have all this stuff at, they have a URL. So, there we go. We got. Website, and you have to install this from the CD, and you discover, uh, to your horror, well, okay, one thing I want to mention is when you disconnect this, if you don't do it properly, you can lock up HEW, and sometimes you have to reboot in order to get the system to re-acknowledge this board. So what you need to do is, I usually hit reset, and then I go under debug and disconnect, and then I also disable j -Link here and hit yes, and then close it. So that seems to be a pretty reliable way of not locking up HEW when you disconnect from the board. So don't just unplug it. So just to show you what you do, if you install this from the CD and you actually have some problems, is what you'll find is this will not be here. So if you install it from the CD and this is not here, here's what you have to do. Um, you end up having to come to this website, and I recommend downloading this. This is actually a copy of the DVD, and it's dated you know, from January, uh, essentially when the latest revision of this software was, was provided. I don't know what the date is that they're shipping out. Hopefully it's the newest, but if it doesn't have this, what you'll have to do is you'll have to download this collection of example projects. And save it somewhere. And what you'll see is it actually provides the path that you need to install this at. So we can see in this case that it needs to be under Program Files Renaissance HEW System BG Renaissance. And in most cases, it might be Program Files x86, depending on what version of the operating system <coughs> of Windows 7 you're using. So in this case, if I go under here, Renaissance, HEW, Systems, PG, Renaissance. See, there's that folder. I already copied it because this didn't have it. But you would copy this whole folder to this directory here. After that's done, uh, all you'd have to do is simply load HEW again, get administration, go search disk, start, and it will find the new modules for you. And then just hit register all and then close. 
And then you'll, if you don't just say unregister this PD target server, you'll get an error message that'll pop up because that's not supported by default. And just hit OK. It's important to hit OK, otherwise it won't load. And after that, reboot uh, HEW and uh, those files will be in there for you. So that's pretty much it uh, for how to use HEW. Questions on that? You want me to load the, uh, the demo, the, uh, the lab one, what it should look like? Okay. So I'm going to load. Have you talked to them about lab one yet? Or you no, but to... you can feel free to just go ahead. All right, well, <laughs> who always read the assignment for lab one? All right, a couple of people. And lab one is a, um, it's actually an interesting thing. Uh, we're going to make, what y'all are going to make is a, a digital model railroad. Those of you that have played with model trains, so in a sense the idea is we're going to try to emulate the train on a track around this circle. And just to give you an illustration of what it looks like, I will open this sign. So, I'm probably hard to see when we're going to visit in the stretch up part. Yeah, probably not. Let's do that. Let me disconnect it from here. So, uh, young young Mr. Uh, McLean always wanted to be a train engineer, and so he uh, he came to UNC Charlotte, went through our program, he got to the senior year, and lo and behold, he found out that it was for electrical engineering, not train engineering. So, being as disappointed as he was, a little bit frustrated too that he couldn't drive a plane, he or pre, a train. He decided to create his own train, and so now you will have the opportunity to uh, actually drive your own train. So here we go. Uh, based on this with a demo, let's see if this is, so if you press one switch, that's stop. Switch one is stop, all right. Yeah. Switch two will allow it to go around in a circle as if it's a uh, uh, an engine pulling the train cars and then it can also go backwards. And I'm sure you're really all excited about this. And by turning the potentiometer down there, you can go faster or slower. And press switch one to stop. More fun than you knew what to do with, right? Can you derail the train? Yeah, let's try. Yeah. Oh, there you go, it's gone, all right. <laughs> and now thanks to the, uh, I should get your name so I can remember uh, all these comments you make in class. John Smith, thank you. All right, so, uh, any questions about lab one? Here's a question. I just unplugged it. Is the program still in there? Yes. Yeah. How do you know that? I thought I thought memory requires uh, power, right? Say that again. Flash memory. Ah, it's in flash memory. Flash memory is a non-volatile memory. So here we go. Let's 
see if it actually works. Oh, when you know the demo starts, press switch one or switch two, and it starts up again. Or you can do it agonizingly slow. Very good. All right. Any other questions? All right. That's it for the demo. Can you hit the stop button?